Hey guys, today we're jumping into Lightroom. I'm going to show you everything you need to know to edit pictures simply, easily, and I'm going to give you a bunch of tips and tricks. It's probably going to be the best video you ever watched. You ready? You weren't ready. Hey guys, here we are back again. We're, we're in Lightroom. And today we're just talking about how to edit, simply edit and kind of going through um, some of the, the different options and tools that we have in Lightroom to, to really quickly and easily um, edit any photo. So I picked one here that's, um, that I shot at the sunset and it's a bit underexposed which is perfect and let's see what we can do to really bring some, uh, some life out of this thing. So firstly, um, this was shot, you can see at the top right there. You can see what it was shot at, 100 ISO on my tripod, uh, 11 millimeter, so nice and super wide. We've got uh, f11 and 1 15th of a second. Our histograms up at the top here, which is going to show our over and underexposed uh, places. And we can actually highlight these little triangles at the top to show clipping. And what clipping is, is showing us where exactly it's underexposed in this case. And you can hover it to uh, kind of see what's going on. Or you can actually press it down to have that on all the time. It's up to you. And the other side is the, the highlights, what's blown out. In this case, nothing right now. But if I were to crank the exposure, you could see it's starting to, to blow out all that stuff. So I'm going to turn those off for now. And just uh, kind of give you a tip there. Just so you can start to see whether your things are over underexposed I um, mean right now as we can see we're straight out of camera this one's a bit um, underexposed so um, let's jump right in we have a couple um, tools right off the bat right under our histogram we have a little row and this is our main kind of editing tools I would say we've got our crop tool which we can easily click and then kind of resize um, however we want a different area of our picture um, using aspect ratios, using custom, doesn't matter, you can change your angle. Um, so we're going to um, we're gonna we're gonna take that crop for now. If we look at the next one, we got a spot removal tool. And what this one's gonna allow us to do is kind of clean up what we don't want. Great for skin, great for annoying rocks or anything really that you don't want in your pitch. And I'll give you a quick idea of what that looks like. Right there, we, uh, we click on that and there's our brush. Um, on the right there, we can choose our size, our feather, which is how much uh, is going to be taken around it to kind of blend it in, and then our opacity of it. So if we kind of look like something like that, um, say I don't want this rock here, I can go ahead and click on that rock and it's going to find a suitable place, kind of sample um, the picture and then choose a good replacement for it. So that looks pretty pretty good pretty blended in there um, another thing to consider here is this is actually on heel um, this is a heel spot brush and we can change it to clone and what that's gonna do is instead of kind of taking um, the, the pixels around it and making it uh, healing it making it look like the surrounding area clones gonna actually literally clone the, the exact spot that you want it to so each have their own application. It's a great tool regardless. Um, I use it every day on everything. Um, and it's, yeah, it's great. So um, let me get rid of that and moving on. We've got a, a red eye correction, which is obvious for portraits and whatnot. We don't see that too much of that anymore. But um, next we've got the gradial, sorry, the graduated filter. And this is just a nice filter. And what we can use this for is um, if we want to maybe bring down uh, some of the highlights just in the sky and just do it really quick, we can do that. And that's just going to affect just that graduated filter. And we can grab the sides and kind of feather that however we want. We can do it not so much. So another another great tool to just kind of isolate um, specific areas that you want. So next we've got a a radial filter which is kind of the same thing as the gradient the, the gradient tool but um, a circle or a an oval or whatever you want to call it and this can be another great tool for your subject for isolating people or um, you know something in the middle or however you want to do it um, 
and it's going to change everything obviously inside or outside if you click invert here it's going to allow you to just kind of focus on on the inside instead of the outside so we'll get that rid of that for now and if we want to delete that if we, if we have that edit and we want to get rid of it we just click on that radial tool and we can actually see where we've made our our changes and if you wanted to you can just get rid of it by pressing delete and then finally we have of course our adjustment brush and this is going to be the brush that uh, hopefully you use um, the most for for pretty much everything uh, this brush is is the, is the best you can pretty much do everything with this brush and really fine-tune um, your edits with it so if it looks too big right off the bat you can actually use your bracket left and bracket right button and change the size of of, of your brush and then come over here and make your edits if I wanted to maybe bring up the exposure a bit and um, kind of draw your eye to these rocks here maybe give them a bit of a shine then I do that and I just kind of paint on exactly that so and then from there once we let go and we have that that adjustment we can actually go over here and and just make those changes and see exactly what's happening and say I like that on the rocks but I think you know it's kind of spilled over onto the water here you can actually just hold alt and then kind of subtract from what we've done if we've gone overboard and we can change the size of that cursor as well um, but in this case I'm just gonna kind of for time's sake just kind of paint where I don't want quickly and then we'll move on so that's a nice little tool there too you can change your saturation your clarity if you just want to pinpoint you know the eyes of somebody or just the sky um, so there's our, our basic um, uh, adjustment brush tool and so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna come in and um, here's the here's the image just straight out of camera and did we get rid of that re great no I'm gonna get rid of these gradient filters here so it looks exactly like out of camera. So there it is, right out of camera. So I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments here just on the sliders. And you can start to see um, the impact that that has on the picture right away. And simply, we can make these changes and really see the result uh, really quickly. And the beauty of Lightroom is you can do it to a lot of pictures um, really fast. Whereas you know, Photoshop might be a more specific photo when you're really getting into layers and really editing a photo um, to make it you know totally unique if you if you got not so much time and you want to bang off 10 20 photos you can um, do the edits on one and then copy them over to the other really quick uh, Lightroom is just a great way to organize um, and edit all your photos quickly I would say so let's just go ahead and start with exposure well maybe we'll bump that up but really one of the first things I like to do is go down to the bottom here and lens correction and I hit that enable profile corrections and that's going to use actually that's not the right one at all for some reason um, but it's it's basically going to um, correct our lens so we're going to find our lens and it's going to uh, correct the distortion and it's going to change our brightness and exposure a little bit whatever it does it, that way we don't have to come back and do it later so I like to do that right off the bat and if we head back up um, what I'll do is I want to maybe bring um, bring out the shadows a bit so right off the bat you can see some of that the rock detail coming out but it, if we go too high you can see that, um, that we were kind of past the point of dynamic range ability and we start to see some grain so I'm not going to take it up too too much and if I was just wanting to you know isolate those rocks and nothing else I might just go for the ex the adjustment brush but in this case I'm going to do that to bring out some of that those shadows to get some more detail um, our highlights here our highlight brush is going to be primarily for bringing them bringing, bringing back detail that we've lost in the highlights so if you notice if I bring down my highlights you can start to see some recovered clouds there at the end and if I bring it back too much it you know it looks too dark so we got to find that happy medium and if I push it up it's going to be blown out so if I bring it down just a bit I can recover some of that some of that detail and then don't confuse highlights with white and what whites is going to do your white slider is going to set your your white point of your image and if, if your image is dark or it's underexposed your white is going to be very low so you can actually set that white point of your image so it's different from from actual highlights there 
And same thing with black. You're gonna set your black, uh, your black point. So the, the blackest of blacks um, is going to be determined by your slider there. Now clarity, clarity is great. Um, you can really bring out an image with clarity. A lot of the time, it's gonna bring out texture and detail. But again, too much, and it starts to look kind of crazy. A little bit. Uh, you don't want it. You want it defined, but not too too much. A dehaze tool, fantastic tool, well, one of the newer tools, and it's really going to do exactly what it says is dehaze things. So you can um, take a bit of the haze away if there is some. Uh, in the opposite direction, you can create haze or give it kind of a foggy look, which is nice. Um, but too much dehaze in either way gets really hairy really fast, and you start to lose um, a lot of everything. So if you're going to use the dehaze, I'd, I'd recommend just a little bit. And then of course vibrance and saturation where we really get to pinpoint our colors and and how strong they are and how vibrant they are uh, again if you go too far you can really see it starts to get silly and uh, just a little bit is going to be nice and saturation again you don't want too much saturation or it starts to look uh, a bit crazy you can also desaturate things don't don't forget you can go the other way depending on the kind of style of picture you're looking to get and that's pretty much it for the the main basic sliders guys and right below that we've got tone and our tone curve is something that we can use to really bring out some kind of depth of our image and really make a change so if I just kind of make a, a simple S curve there um, boom it's gonna really bring out kind of everything nice and and kind of balance it out give it more natural look so just just like that if we click on over here to to, uh, before and after we can really start to see some of the differences um, just by playing around with a few sliders so um, it's a great tool and you know maybe bump up that contrast a bit uh, really simple edit a couple different tools that you can use um, if we scroll down here um, we can sharpen our image here with detail um, if we do have some noise in our image of course noise reduction luminance is going to take that away uh, it's it's going to take away detail as well. Keep that in mind. If you look at the rocks there, if I crank it, uh, 100 is going to look really really soft, and zero is going to be, um, you know, pretty pretty sharp. So you know, if, if if need be, and even sometimes I use it when I just want a softer look. Um, other than that, um, we've got a couple uh, tools in the transform kind of area or the effects we can throw a bit of vignetting on it if we want to have that um, but uh, yeah really simple really awesome program where you can bring all your stuff and just really quickly make a lot of changes to to anything you want to do and then quickly export it and get it on uh, online or whatever you're doing so and just a few last tips for you here these are the probably the tips that are my favorite things in Lightroom that I use all the time and um, they're really simple. So one is, uh, if you wanted to start with an image and you weren't really sure which route you want to take, you can duplicate your image. You can create a virtual copy. And all you do is go down to your image at the bottom of the screen. You right click and you go to create virtual copy. And from there you can, you know, do two versions of, of one image and see which one you like better or keep one original. And from there, um, one of the things that I like to do right away is to save a lot of time if I don't really if I'm looking for inspiration or something you look on the left here we've got a bunch of presets um, that come with uh, Lightroom here and you can just cycle through and highlight highlight them to see what they're gonna do to your image and just you know kinda get a, a cool idea sometimes or some inspiration so it's endless and we've got black and white we've got we've got all sorts of things so take advantage of those presets if you Again, are still um, trying to find out your editing style, which one you might like. Um, some people use that. Also, when you're editing your image on the left-hand side, you're gonna have a history box. And this is a record of every change that you've made to this image since you imported it. So you can actually go back and see exactly what you did. So if, you know, uh, during the process, you you did something that you you weren't really too fond of or you made a mistake and didn't realize that you can go back and actually change any one of these things it's going to show you just by highlighting it so really great option really great tool to have right there and you can even see the adjustments that you made 
So lastly, I have my image here straight out of camera, unedited. And one thing to save you a lot of time to give you a really good baseline of where you should be, is just on the right hand side here, um, it's this auto button right above exposure. And when you press that, Lightroom's gonna go ahead and automatically use what it thinks is best for that picture. It's gonna basically choose a lot of the settings for you. It's not gonna do clarity or dehaze or any of the, the crazy stuff. It's not gonna do your tones, but I find it, it's just gonna save me a lot of time to kind of get a base if I'm just quickly whipping through some, some photos, some stock photos or what have you. And it just seems to save me a lot of time. And um, I really love that tool. Well, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you got something out of it. And if you did, consider maybe giving me a like and a subscribe and drop your questions and comments down below. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some pictures. See you next time.